yo what's going on guys it's your boy Sister here with a video here today for you guys a photoshop tutorial on how to create your very own cool clean hud gaming ui whatever the title of the video says as usual um little theme got it going on here today so basically the last time i did this was like i did the clean ui banner design where it was more like focused around like a like a cool like website kind of design kind of thing this time was more focused like a kind of a fps kind of first person shooter video game division s kind of theme and i think it came out pretty cool and one of the coolest things i think about this is the fact that we're, we're going to be using libraries in this video where it's kind of like really quickly make these really nice textures that of course you can use whatever in patterns or whatnot so you can basically see in the background here um like these little shimmering kind of squares uh that's one thing you're gonna learn how to do and also like the little simple little dots this is a very cool way to kind of make your own textures and hopefully just kind of like find a cool scheme out of this and make it something of your own right so uh with that being said 275 likes on the video as usual equals a secret down below which most likely i'm just gonna put the psd that you guys see here today in the actual secret download so you can, of course if you guys want to explore it learn it enjoy it all that good stuff customize it what you want to need what it with it what you wanted to say gotcha um yeah let's just get this thing going and uh yeah much love for clicking the video as always let's get this thing going all right guys let's go ahead and this is going right here and so of course the first thing i'm gonna do is hide my example right here which is this layer so of course the background color we're gonna start off with is this color right here so this is the hex tone for the actual first starting color so this is what your background color should be at first now what we're gonna do is make a new layer and we're gonna put a secondary color in here and that color is gonna be this color right here so press OK. I'm going to take a brush, a very simple, pretty big size brush, zero hardness. And we're going to simply just kind of click on the right hand side, drag it towards the middle. And we're going to make ourselves a very simple manual gradient by just doing that. Right. So with these two colors here, looks pretty nice. But I'm going to hold control and select both these two layers together. Then I can press control J to make a duplicate. Control E to merge it together. And we're going to go to filter, noise, add noise. And this is going to be adding just a very clean noise. 4% is pretty much perfect for this distribution on uniform press. Okay. And then you guys yourself a nice little noisy kind of background going on here. So next we're going to be doing is the two different textures, um, that are going in the background that are going to be super, super fun, super easy to do. And you're going to of course love it. So what you want to do is when firstly, we have to make, we have to do, so we have to make the asset to make the actual textures. Ta-da. Right. So we're going to make a new layer. We're going to go ahead and use the rectangle marquee tool. And we're going to make ourselves a pretty good size square, not too big or not too small, just like relative to like the actual canvas. You can see how my uh, my size is just like so. Then if you guys want to, you can either just make your foreground pure white, then press alt backspace to quick fill it in very easy and very quick. Or if you have it non-selected, right click, fill, drop down, use white is also perfectly fine. Right click, deselect. But with this new square here, we're going to basically be making three different copies of it. So the first copy is going to be 30% opacity, just like so. Then I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift. Alt and Shift allows me when I click and drag, it makes a duplicate for me and keeps it on the same axis the way that I moved it. Just like so, you can see it's very simple. Then I'm gonna take my fill, move this to 15% now this time, and then do it one more time. And I'm gonna put this nice little cool, like almost like a triangle shape going on here, right? I'm gonna put this fill to about 5%. And now we have three different tones of these squares and this nice little L-shaped kind of uh, triangle going on here, but we're not done yet. We're gonna make another new layer once again zoom in right i'm going to make it basically one pixel away from the corner of the actual first square right so we want another square but just one pixel away from the actual first square that we have here something like this right i'm gonna quick fill my white in and then all you want to do now is just make basically kind of like take it drag it, and put it on every single corner of the actual square just like so boom make it faster myself just take all three and move them down right and then i'll take this one put this down here and then take this one Put this down here and then we have ourselves this nice little simple kind of like fun little asset that you get of course you can use this alone as well so what i want to do is take the first layer right the, this last layer we did hold shift click on the first layer we did which is the actual first square group it together by pressing ctrl g to make a group and then you can press ctrl j to of course duplicate that group and then ctrl e to merge that group that way you have two different things one is grouped together but one is now a single layer as well so if you guys want to you can take this new single layer one and put this around the actual banner design when you're done or whatever you want to use it as an asset but of course we'll be using it for ourselves for the actual texture so for the actual texture of course you want to make sure you have your windows libraries open right you're going to see i have some patterns already here for myself but your, yours is probably going to be empty. I, even if I want to, I will just like actually click and erase all these for myself. Let's just do that just for the sake of non-confusion. So yours just looks something like this where it's basically pure empty, right? So when you have the actual layer selected, then you want to click on the actual plus button and choose create from image. 
So once you create it from image, you guys will see this little table is going to pop up and to quickly obviously get a quick little demonstration of it. There's five different tabs. They all do something actually different, right? So I'm going to say on the fifth tab for this instance, I'm going to scroll down for a second and you're going to see a basic, a square preview screen, right? And for this one, I believe each one is different, right? This one takes triangles. This one takes like, like the whole entire thing. This one takes triangles as well, but kind of does it in a different rotation. This one takes smaller triangles that are more skinnier. And the one over here just takes square, the pure square. So depending on which one you click over here is how it's selecting the area that's going on in the bottom right here. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. But for the first one, we want the last one here, the actual last tab, take my scale. I'm gonna drag this all the way down to point one. And this is gonna have my, this is how I'm gonna get my little kind of really small little square dots, right? These little kind of like nice, um, just techy looking kind of things going on here and the rotation is still on zero. And once you guys have this, you can press save to CC libraries, right? But then don't be afraid to, of course, explore, go through these tabs here. If you say, ah, I don't like that one. You like, Oh, I like this one. Save to libraries. Do not be afraid. Of course, save multiple uh, versions. This one right here, pretty freaking cool. Save to library. Do like I said, just don't be afraid to save it. You might not know which one you guys like the most, regardless. Of course, if you guys want to uh, move the scale around, enjoy it, have fun with it be my guess. But there's one more texture we of course need to get still. And that is basically taking the scale itself, moving this about 0.7 or 0.9 or so. And then actually taking the actual back uh, kind of like square here and moving it in a different area to kind of, of course, get something that you might like. Uh, to me, this is pretty cool. Now be my guest, move it around, have fun. I just want something like this. I think something I have like squares on the edges here just looks cool. Save to CC library and we're good to go. We're gonna press close just like so. I can actually then hide this and I start putting these actual textures in. So with the libraries themselves, of course, you can just click on the actual patterns that you of course put in there just now, right? I'm gonna take my scale and put mine to about 40%. The scale itself can be scaled all the way really small, really big as well. It's just kind of like how it works with the patterns themselves. I'm putting my to 40%. Press OK. Now each pattern fill, of course, comes with an actual layer mask. So the layer mask is if you guys take your brush, which is a nice little simple hard zero hardness brush, you can see the black and white is your foreground, your back and colors. The black will actually erase. You can press X to switch it to white, right? And the white will actually fill it in, just like so. I'm gonna be taking the black brush though, however, and just taking it and erasing it a little bit in little areas to make it look kind of like fun and playful, get a little bit of depth in there, get a little bit of like foreground and background kind of like work in there, right? That looks pretty good. So I'm gonna add in, of course, our little dots as well. So for this, I believe it's this one right here. Um, yeah, let's just do this one. Why not? Let's just take the scale and just, of course, put this down to about maybe like six or so. Let's, see, let's even go even smaller, like three. Okay, three is pretty good. I'm gonna use three, press uh, okay. Now, of course, rem like a reminder, when we actually did our first squares, the opacity themselves were at 30%, which is the highest one. So if these dots are not as good as you guys would want them to be, be my guest and press control J to make a duplicate of it. And of course, that'll make it a little more brighter because of course, stacking your opacities. This is a little bit nicer for me. I can just take these two layers together, hold control, and then press control E to merge it together. Now, of course, the la layer mask is gone. If you want to put that back in, this is it right here, right to the right of the actual effects button, right? I can take my black brush again, take it and kind of erase in little areas. And I want to erase too much because I'll, I'll leave it for like when I actually get in there and kind of make sure I'm not, not erasing where I don't want it to be at. But right about that, it's pretty good. Now we got a little dots in there. We got our texture in there. Let's put our actual gradient in here as well. So gradient map. The gradient for this one is right here. So if you guys were to copy this, on the far left side of this gradient is pure black. Then on the about 70%, 75% of the way, excuse me, is this nice little blue right here. Then on the far right hand side is this blue right here. And once you guys have that going on, you can press OK. Then I would definitely suggest you guys to lower your opacity from 100%. It's about 50 or so. That's how you get that really, really nice, pure, like blue kind of tone. And uh, you're kind of like now ready to actually move in to the inside, which is like the nice, cool little uh, boxes. So uh, for the boxes, the logo is like move right there for some reason. Uh, for the boxes, I was gonna kind of like guess where the middle is. If you guys wanna put rulers as well, be my guess. But if you wanna have rulers, it's Control R on your keyboard, right, to bring them up. You just click on the left hand side. You kind of guess where the middle is. You'll feel a snapping kind of like feeling, just like so, right? Then you can let it go, and that's where the middle is. Do the same thing with the one that's horizontal as well. So to get our box, right, make a new layer. Take the marquee tool, hold Alt. Click on the middle, holding Alt will keep the actual orientation of our marquee tool wherever we clicked first. Now we can drag it and make it as big and as we want. I would say right about, right about here is pretty good. So then I'm actually gonna do is right click, fill, and I'll drop down to use white, just like so, right? Then I'll right click, deselect. I'm just gonna change my foreground color right here to also white. Actually, I'll change this one like this, just like that. 
Cool. So now with this, I'm going to go ahead and take my fill and lower this down to the single digits. So about, let's do about six or so. Let's do six at first. Yeah, let's do six. Control H to hide those rulers, by the way. Right now, a six will pass. It looks pretty good. Now, of course, get these little dots right here. It's as simple as it actually looks. This right here. Right. We're going to make another new layer. We're going to take our square marquee tool. Right. We're going to go to the inside of this and just make ourselves a nice square holding shift. A pretty good size, just like so. I'll press Alt Backspace again to quick fill it in the white. Then I press Control D to deselect. Then I was going to put these squares on the inside of each uh, each kind of like corner, right? Then, I'm gonna, of course, in the, each of the corners, we're going to press a new uh, layer right here. Go into here. We're going to take the corner, make, it our, uh, make ourselves a nice, simple, small kind of like uh, two or three pixel wide uh, rectangle, kind of like long one like this. Fill it in with white again, right? Then I can hold Alt Shift, drag it down to make a duplicate of it. Then Control T right to free transform it holding shift taking it if you hold shift and rotate it while holding shift if you hope there we go if you rotate it while holding shift it'll rotate it by 15 degrees so of course it'll make it very easy for you to get that perfect 90 degrees just like so then i'll move this one right about here right looks pretty good i mean this is pretty freaking long if you guys want to shorten them be my guess i'm not going to shorten them for now because it doesn't really matter but i can then control click on these first two layers right that's going to be these two lines hold shift and uh alt drag it over and then put them on each corner Perfect. Now that we're on each corner, I can go ahead and kind of merge these all together by just like clicking, uh, you can control click on them, click at the first layer, hold shift, click on the layer that you know is the last one that'll select everything in between. Then you can press control G to actually merge it together as in a group. And then pressing control J will make uh, a duplicate. And then pressing control E will merge together just like so. Now, if you guys want to, I might even just take where the middle is once again and make this a little bit skinnier on the inside. I'll, I'll keep the long ones like long, but I'm going to make the skinnier ones. On the inside i think that'll look pretty cool sweet yeah now we have that this entire one layer actually let's have to put this in here as well let's put the actual uh not the background layer all the squares as well and press ctrl g to group that together ctrl j to make a duplicate ctrl e to merge together uh, now we have everything now in that one single layer of course you can keep it in our group as well because you can also put a layer style on a group i'm just going to merge it together because why not now we use color overlay make it nice and orange this is the nice orange i'm using in today's video press ok Press OK again. So as simple, we just made it so that all these are now orange and we can put in our nice text in here now. Let's do clean HUD like we did before. Right, I believe this first font I believe was Marsic. Right, we'll make the HUD orange. Now this can be where you put your name of course. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the group. So this is the group that has everything inside, right? Besides the actual background, which is this background that's over the, uh, or behind the clean HUD. We're gonna take that as well by holding control and clicking on that as well. So you can see now everything is now selected. So I re uh, saw, or how do you say, I re uh, unhid the group, which is this one right here that we had before, right? And we're gonna take this, hold Alt, and we'll take the actual background layer as well and drag it below the background layer, just like so. So we'll make a duplicate of those two things. So it's gonna be a duplicate of this right here. Then I can go back and hide this like group layer, right? Then I'll go back into here, drag this down. Then what I'll do, is control T to free transform, hold shift and take it and kind of just size it to how I want. Something like that would be pretty cool. Make it a little more skinnier maybe, right? Take this, move it up around here. Then what I'll do is I'll go back into the group and take away all this line stuff right here. I'm just clicking on it, delete it, get rid of it. Now what we'll do is put our nice little subtext in here, banner tutorial. I believe this one right here is actually the font uh, closeness. What I did with here was I made sort of the VA spacing right here. So if you guys don't have the character table open, it's under Windows character. Take the VA spacing, just make it a little more like about 600 or so. It's pretty good. Then you can take your size and lower this just like so. You can just use a scroll wheel. Okay, then I'll just move this to the center. Then the white was a little bit too much for me, so I took the color and made it a little more gray tone, just like so. That looks pretty good here. Now we'll do one more subtext right around here. And we'll just make this one. Also, this needs to be a little bit more skinnier let's just do this a little bit more skinnier like so without the banner tutorial being moved please there we go a little bit more cool have that we have this so just make this name social you can put like your social medias right here if you guys want okay now with this i believe this font is definitely a rame so i use three different fonts in this so a rame which is this one right here I'll take this, actually put it at three and then we'll just split this a little bit more, right? Make it look nice and cool and techy. I don't want it to go over this line here. It's going to bring this in just a little bit more. 
right? Something like that. So Arame is this font right here. This font is Closeness right here. And this font is called Marsic, I believe. All these were in my uh, 2019 font video, I think. So now we have this looking all cool. Of course, if you guys want to as well, I kind of want to see if this would be better. If it was, of course, stretched as well. Just like this, right? I think it looks pretty cool. So don't be afraid, of course, go back in, move things around. I see that looks pretty, pretty, way better, in my opinion. Cool. Now we have that. So I'm going to do now is going to make a new layer, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of make a simple simple line just like this right about three or four pixels this is about three pixels wide right press control uh excuse me alt back to quick fill that in that white then i'll hold alt and shift move this over now i'm gonna get my logo for a second all right i got my logo in here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna find out where the middle is move these two lines up a little bit actually because of course these lines are hitting the edges of this so this is perfectly fine move this up a little bit more just like so now my logo is actually basically pure white if you guys want to and then just leave the opacity about nine percent to get it looking nice and faded like so now with these two things that right here merge them together lower my fill down go back into this go into stroke path here make your color white the position on the inside uh the size one then you can do is make your opacity as well how do you say your pass about 25 percent get this nice little line in there as well you can take your fill you don't have to put it on zero you can put it on like Let's just put on like four or so, right? Looks pretty good. Just nice little clean little lines like that. Just make it look way better. So I'm going to press Control Shift and again to make a new layer. I'm going to put myself these four squares on the corners of my logo. Okay. Let's just put this. Uh, let's put, please, move this one here. Move this one around here. I think that'll look pretty good. Now, if it's too close to this, I might move it up a little bit more. Like all four of these. Of course, my logo as well will be centered there. So what that means is this line is going to have to move up just like so. That looks way better. So now what that's done, we'll give ourselves a nice little carrot on the edges over here. I believe the font that I used for this was Arame. I believe all these fonts are free, by the way. So do not be afraid to, go, of course, Google those. You're all good to go. Horizontal. Simple stuff that's going on here. We're just going to control click these two things, right? And lower the opacity of them. Or you can just make them gray, which either way works. And uh, that looks pretty good there. And the secret weapon in this is this cool little asset here, which of course you guys will get if you guys hit 300. And you guys get the actual PSD. So I'm like that, right? Then I'll lower my opacity down a little bit. Maybe like 48, 45, that'd be good. Take my actual layer mask, my brush. Get in there and erase a little bit around. And you got yourselves a clean looking UI. So, I mean, the whole premise of this is kind of like a rinse and repeat. We're just really honestly duplicating, merging, copying, duplicating, moving. We're just doing the same things over and over again. So, the end of this part kind of flew by, but it is as simple as it honestly looks. But just putting together things that just look uh, really pretty and that kind of stuff. You can put other things as well, like I said before. If you guys can find where we put that uh, that layer, like this layer right here, right? Take this. Right? You can put this in different areas like this. And if you guys want to, a little trick, what you guys can do is when you guys say this is pretty cool and done, right? Like putting those two things in there, right? You can click the first layer, the only layer that's also showing. So the first, oh, excuse me, your last layer, you can click on that, then press Control, Alt, Shift, E. That'll merge everything together into one simple layer. You can take your blur tool, which I believe is right here, right? You can make this a little more bigger. Take this kind of stuff and blur it around. So you can get some of these areas and blur if you guys want to, to make it look cool and edgy, right? Kind of like that, kind of like that. You can blur this around as well. And when you guys are done blurring your stuff, do it one more time. So Control, Shift, Alt, and E, right? Go to where it says Filter, Other, High Pass, about 1.3 pixels. Press OK. Then change your blend mode from Normal to Overlay. That'll make everything nice and HD for you guys, right? It's almost like using a Sharpen. I mean, so if you guys did, of course, enjoy. Once again, tune in if I likes on the video. Because the screen down below, which will be the PSDs you guys see here today. Once again, just much love. If you guys have any tutorial ideas you guys want us to do, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, enjoy yourselves. Hope 2020 is going beautiful and amazing for you guys. I have a few tutorials lined up, a few other ideas, of course, lined up. I'm thinking about uh, certain things I want to kind of do. Hopefully, you guys enjoy them. Hope you guys like them. Uh, keep a lookout for the whole Q&A video coming out not very soon. I'll probably, like, say, three weeks or so or two weeks or so because um, I have to get questions for that. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. Much love, guys. Of course, I'll talk to you guys later. Send so HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Later. Much love. I'll see you guys later. Once again. Okay, bye.